This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. Oh boy, South Park Snow Day looks like it might be a bit of a dud, everyone. I mean, when IGN, the king of all kings, gives your game a single point more than The Walking Dead Destinies, you know this must be some bottom of the barrel garbage. No, but in all seriousness, as someone who loves South Park and has adored the stick of truth and fractured butthole when it came to Snow Day, I just wasn't sure how to feel about this game before release. The art style was going into the third dimension, gameplay was completely shifting from the previous two games, and to be honest, I didn't even really know what type of game to expect upon release. And then the reviews came out, and I was seriously worried. Not because reviews are the be all and end all, as I'm always going to try and preserve judgment until I play a game for myself, but 3s, 4s and 5s out of 10 on a game I wasn't particularly hopeful for to begin with, yeah, worrisome, and definitely had my expectations at an all time low going into the game. But for half the price of most new releases, I figured as a fan I still had to at least see what the game is like. Can't be that bad, right? As always, if you do end up enjoying the content, be sure to leave the video a like, comment below some more Platinums you'd like to see me tackle next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go over to twitch.tv slash mayorhairbear if you want to see some of these Platinum journeys live. Now, as I said, I'd heard the reviews for the game, which painted a pretty damning picture of what I was getting into for Snow Day. But I still didn't really know what type of game I was about to go through. All I knew was it wasn't like the previous two games was supposed to be a short experience, and even to 100% the game would take no longer than 12 hours. So I went into Snow Day pretty much completely blind, and this was my experience. Oh, and yeah, we're getting into spoilers today. The premise behind Snow Day is a simple one. Cartman comes home during a bad snowstorm, excited and hoping that school will be cancelled tomorrow. In reality, the snowstorm is a nasty one killing people in town, which worries Leanne, but hey, that's the kid versus adult mindset. At night, Eric prays to God for a snow day, and in the morning, he gets just that, as the news reports that all Park County schools are to be closed. And just like that, Cartman gets into character, goes outside and tells everyone, including, of course, the new kid, to come play outside. This is where we get our tutorial for the game, which I only bring up because this is where we unlock our first trophy. But not for completing the tutorial or anything like that. No, with our very first ability called Fart Escape, we manage to lift off and make four kids vomit simultaneously. The Green Seas. Make at least four enemies vomit with no more than one second of farting. I think I forget what that was. But with the tutorial complete and everyone in their fantasy costumes, Cartman tells the new kid that the elves, led by Kyle, are planning to attack Cooper Keep. So we load into our first of five chapters and get to work. Now it's here where I should explain for those who don't know what the gameplay loop is like in Snow Day. At its core, Snow Day is a relatively simplistic third person hack and slasher where you have a melee and ranged weapon, plus two abilities and quite a strong backing of roguelite elements. Almost a roguelite with chapter select in a way. Each chapter is broken up into staged and random events, mainly centered around combat and after most encounters you'll have Jimmy waiting there for you to select a random card. These cards will buff either your weapons or abilities, you can pick up the prime currency of 2020 toilet paper in the chapter to level up said cards, and basically the more you progress into the level the stronger you get type of deal. Oh, and you can do this with three other people or solo with the AI, which is what I did and uh, let's just say that didn't always go so well. Come on. Oh, you f***ing serious, man. Anyway, going back to those cards, that is where I actually unlocked the next trophy for acquiring a legendary card from Jimmy through upgrading. Legendary! I knew that was a freaking trophy. <laughs> and just a little down the way, after scrambling to find the right emote, revived one of our AI partners while dancing. Here we go, grave dancing. <laughs> I figured out where the emote was. Unfortunately, it was here where I realized two things about this game. One is, if you die in the chapter, you need to start that chapter again from the very beginning. No checkpoints, no matter how long the chapter is. <coughs> Cartman. <coughs> 
which made me compare Snow Day to something like Vermintide because easy in the beginning isn't that easy. You need to acquire permanent upgrades, new weapons and abilities to make easy actually easy and move up to normal and then the same thing to get to hard. I realized this when I started on normal and was just getting beat up on. My AI partners were always going down, when they're down you're getting lasered. It did put me in my place and even when I lowered the difficulty too easy without those upgrades it can still get you. Basically, I was a scrub in the beginning and had to restart Kyle's level again. Thankfully, it wasn't for nothing though, as by using the staff and setting four enemies on fire once we unlocked another trophy. Yes, sense. Hey, Field of Flames. Uh, dickhead, your buddy is getting Set Oh, we'll take that. That was a pure accident. And one more by accident as we let a little fart slip out by pressing right on the D-pad. Oh, I just have to stand here. Found the toot button. What's that for? Uh, relieve the buildup of natural pressures and- oh my, that is a fuck- I don't even know what that's for. But after all that, it was time to face off against Kyle, who I honestly believe is the most annoying fight in the game. At this point, you do no damage, all these attacks have pushback, and your AI just gets drawn to those vines like a bear to honey. But after a slog, we did finally defeat him. Weed killer. After defeating Kyle, Cartman demands he answer why he was planning to attack Cooper Keep, which Kyle denies and states that he just wanted to talk to Stan, who he believes is responsible for the snowstorm. So off we go into Stan's territory, only to learn that Stan has obtained a powerful axe in a quest and whoops our butt. We're just not ready for that battle with Stan yet and luckily he sends Kenny to try and take us out instead. But before that, on our run through town by again complete accident, as I really had no clue what the trophies were like going into this game, I managed to fart escape my way out from three assassins, which was a nice surprise. I need to like, woo, put the ass in assassin. <laughs> oh, nice. Back to Kenny though, and as majestic as Princess Kenny is, she goes down without too much trouble. Outside the fact, this just perfectly shows yet another example of why your AI teammates hate you and your trophies. No! No! <laughs> you f Stupid AI teammates, man. I'll come back to this moment later. Even in death, she oh, it's gonna say, never mind. Bastardly behavior. Defeat Princess Kenny. After our battle with Kenny, we need to complete some quests like Stan did to be able to defeat him. And this chapter I found to be the most random as you get Jimbo and Ned giving you fetch quests all the way to escaping from 6th graders in a fire bulldozer. But the point is, through these tasks we will not only be strong enough to take on Stan, but also unlock ourselves a trophy before becoming an honorary marsh walker. Fully worthy, what's this for? You become an honorary, honorary marsh walker, Jesus. Mush mouth over here. <laughs> the stand fight was built up as a tough battle, but with the wand and the Molotov cocktail card, he went down pretty damn quickly. Please, do you want. Dragon killer. With Stan defeated and now on our side, he reveals that he had access to Dark Matter from Mr. Hanky, who became vengeful after being banished from the town. So we need to confront him. But of course, Cartman, faced with the snow day coming to an end and going back to school, betrays us and brainwashes the town through dark matter infused hot chocolate. By the way, if you didn't pick up what the game's putting down, dark matter is shit. Anyway, now we need to stop Cartman and this is by far the longest chapter in the game. Thankfully, it was going pretty well to start with as we moved through town, defeating Leanne. The Cursed Bloodline. Defeat Leanne at the church. Oh, there you go. Defeating our 10th enemy from a weapon strike in the air. The South Park? Oh my god. Death from above. And increasing the rarity of our 10th card to rare or better. Interesting choice discerning and even managed to reach Cartman. Then it all fell apart because you guessed it, the AI. F you. <laughs> what a long mission, dude. Oh, that hurts. That hurts right there. 
To be fair though, I was trying to do a lot in that fight, which is where I go back to that Kenny fight moment. You see, when you begin a chapter, you get given one card and what is called a BS card. These are limited powers and completely random what you get, but I knew I needed to defeat a human boss with a melee attack whilst invisible. So when I saw invisibility in chapter 2, I took it. But the AI stole that final hit from me, so I needed to try it again. And chapter 4 against Cartman was when it appeared again. That wasn't all though, because Cartman also has a boss trophy for defeating him without damaging any of his stationary decoys. So I had a lot on my mind, my teammates went down, and I panicked and bit the dust. Resetting me an hour, and back I went to the start of the chapter. This one really hurt. I won't lie, but I did reload it straight away and try again. Luckily, I got invisibility again. All I needed to do was get back to Cartman. Oh, please don't. Please don't kill me again. <laughs> My heart can't take. We've already done a ton more damage. I think I was relying on my um, staff a bit too much. Did the other decoys move? That's what I can't tell. I'd rather just let my AI companions take care of these guys. Heal. There's so many healing items, guys. Just use them. Yes! No tears now, only dreams. We'll take that. 14. I know thy enemy. My heart is racing. Defeat Carmen without damaging any of his decoys. What was it? 15? An inevitable betrayal. Defeat Cartman in the foothills. My heart is pumping, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> With Cartman defeated, he decides to join the fight against Mr. Hankey and head off with the boys to the hospital, which Mr. Hankey turned into a fortress. Mr. Hankey turns into the great Mighty Pooh and fights the boys, but is a bit of a pushover, honestly, with the toilet paper cannons. Everyone needs ambient. Defeat the no, no, no second, no second phase. <laughs> <laughs> He's just really easy. As the snow melts, Cartman dreads having to go back to school only for Jesus to arrive and express his disappointment towards the boys for not forgiving Mr. Hankey over his tweets that got him cancelled. The boys go to a toilet and apologise to Mr. Hankey for abandoning him and Mr. Hankey quickly forgives them. Cartman and Stan ask for more snow and Mr. Hankey obliges, causing another snow day. And that's the story done for South Park, Snow Day. 17 trophies down, 15 to go. This should be a piece of cake. Or at least that's what I thought. Initially, at the very least, we were flying through trophies as I replayed Chapter 5 to try and grab the trophy Clean Underwear for defeating 50 pooplets in the Mr. Hanky boss battle. So back I went through Chapter 5, first talking to Nicole, who is only unlocked after beating the game, to activate one of her infernal packs, which basically adds a restriction or extra challenge to the level for better rewards. I just needed one more kill with a cannonball, so that was easy to grab here. Pirate ship, please. And I was scouring this level to find Nicole again because for the trophy Hardcore, I need to complete all of Nicole's packs in a single level and win. But I just couldn't find her anywhere and I was sure I heard she appears three times per chapter so I thought maybe I had to do it in another level. So I went into the boss fight. I ended up defeating those pooplets which really should have been an easy get the first time around. Clean underwear. Yep, that's the pooplets done. <laughs> and with Mr. Hanky defeated, once again, this happened. A new rule. Finish a map with one extra rule book applied. That's 20. Hardcore! What the hell? <laughs> that was only one challenge in there. I thought there was like three or something. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll take that. 
Yeah, Nicole only appeared once in the whole chapter and that was good enough to count towards hardcore. So we take those and move on. It was from this point though, I sort of got a bit overwhelmed and didn't really know where was the best chapters to go for certain trophies. And also this is where the luck starts to come into play. As for a lot of these remaining trophies, I needed either a specific card for my abilities or weapons, a specific BS card for either myself or our enemy. Then on top of that, the RNG of the AI to not screw me out of my trophies. Which happened in chapter one, while I was trying to get the trophies, tap that maple syrup, for killing an ent with bleed damage and impotent vengeance for farting on a boss while you're down. Two trophies I thought would be easy, but just roll the clips. No. Ah. Man, stop taking my kills. You fucks, man. Don't want to be picked up. And you're gonna do it. Again. Like, they're doing work. I'm not gonna get this. Pain in my ass, Kyle. You had one job. That wasn't all I was trying to do, but again, it relied on grabbing specific upgrade cards, which thankfully we did get one here for Gravity Bomb. Hey, there we go. Projectiles absorbed. We'll take that. I'll do it myself. That's for the Event Horizon. And also, a little later in the level, after failing the Ent Challenge, saved up enough TP throughout the level to upgrade a card all the way to Ultra Legendary. I've had my eye on that one. There we go. Ultra Legendary. I thought it bugged. See you soon. I remember you gotta buy it. That's fine. Nice. It took us almost an hour to grab our next trophy because again, failed attempts due to RNG or bad AI are never fun, but I did want to shift gears and attempt Marsh Pooper, which is for defeating Stan within 25 minutes of starting the level. I actually have no idea how lenient this trophy is time-wise, as I tried to avoid all enemy encounters I could in the fetch quest part of it, but I felt we got to Stan pretty damn quickly, and thankfully, through some solid RNG during the battle, unlock the trophy for healing 150 points of damage in a single use to our allies. Powered, powdered cheese bath? Oh, that's the healing one. Yes! Marsh pooper, we got two. Let's go. I was determined to get this end kill with bleed next though, as the AI had taunted me for too long. And after much agony, the AI finally let me have it. I s swear to God, these AI are the worst. They're f useless half the time. They don't do anything I want. They f made me replay this level to begin with by being shit. And then when I actually want them to be f garbage, like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to steal this kill. Thanks. Don't you dare. Yes! <laughs> Tap that maple syrup. Freaking hell, man. I don't know how many times we had to do that before our AI was nice to us, oh, but we got it done. These next three trophies though basically had me stuck on chapter four for a couple of hours as I was trying to multitask, but also pray the game would give me the cards I needed to succeed. So what cards were they exactly? Well, in terms of BS cards, we just had one more ability for ourselves and that was around the ability Moon Jump. We needed the enemy to pull a vampire BS card, and in specifically chapter 4, we needed to use the ability Cheese, or Cat Piss as I called it, and in the level hope we get the card Cheesy Zombies. Trying to get the BS cards was the easy part, because you can just start a level, if you get the cards, keep going, obviously one of the two is fine, and if we don't get either, quit to Cooper Keep and try again. It was the cheesy zombies that really gave me the most grief because you only get one or two Jimmy upgrades before the necromancers, but it takes a good 15 minutes or so to get there. So you need to fight your way through these combat encounters, pray you get this one card, and if you don't, may as well go back to the start and try again. Thankfully, we did get Moon Jump pretty regularly to attempt the trophy Moon Crash for killing an enemy with an aerial attack after being in the air for at least a second, with Moon Jump, obviously. This one took me a little bit to figure out, but eventually, we got there. There we go, Moon Crash, we got it. 
<laughs> we did manage to find cheesy zombies as well thanks to a random ambush encounter and all we needed to do with this was use our cat piss on a dead necromancer to revive him for an axe trophy. Alright, the Escher of Necromancy. Now I just kind of have to pray that our friendlies go down somehow. It was the second Necromancer trophy that gave me serious grief though. And that was Middle Management, which requires you to revive an ally with a Necromancer under your control. The issue is, your AI lock in on Necromancers, which is great for regular play. But when I need them alive... Not so much. Not to mention the fact I needed my AI partners to go down, which they never seemed to want to do with a necromancer around. And this one took me a long ass time to the point I almost stopped playing and called the stream despite how close we were to the platinum. Again, the annoying part with necromancers is they're only regularly in chapter four halfway through the level. So you'll need to just replay the same parts, hoping your AI goes down and just so happen to have a necromancer close by to revive them. I hated this trophy and it's not even RNG in the usual sense. Thankfully, I found the strat eventually. What you want to do is not fight any enemies until you reach the shield maidens on Main Street. Start attacking them and that's where your AI will spawn. For some reason, the AI just are not equipped to handle shields and will eventually go down. And if you're lucky, a necromancer you ran past will creep up ready for you to grab this godforsaken trophy. Come here. Go, 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 go. Yes! <laughs> oh, f this level. Completely f off. Nah, I'm not, not doing carbon anymore. That sounded wrong, but <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. Now, all I had left was two trophies. One of which was for farting on a boss while down, and the easiest fight to do that on is Stan, as he should always be close by. Die yes! <laughs> Impotent Vengeance. You wanna fight? Pretty simple, but not so much for our last trophy, Van Helsing, for defeating 10 vampire kids. Seemed simple enough, but after all this time, I'd only had the vampire BS card enough to get 7 done. And whilst we can load into levels and just quit out until we get the vampire card, you never know how far into the level you'll face said vampires. Which was when the goat stepped in. GNT Puppy made what would be a huge play. This trophy progress isn't usually tied to a save because if you because if you can play tutorial yeah, okay. three more times, it's guaranteed vampires. Exactly. So back I went to the tutorial where there is guaranteed to be one vampire kid, and wouldn't you know it, it tracks. Because this might be a god tier play by Puppy. If he's correct. If he's not, he's banned. <laughs> Let's go! He's a king! And with that knowledge, after a couple of quick tutorial run-throughs, the trophy was ours, the platinum had been achieved, and our time with South Park Snow Day had come to an end. Van Helsing! Get hyped! Hyped in the chat, come on! Get around me! Official South Park resident. That's the platinum done. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> Um, go like that. Got the 32, forgot about the trophy tracker. So after roughly 9 hours in total, according to my PlayStation, even though I streamed the game for 11 hours, what did I think of South Park Snow Day's Platinum Trophy and the game in general? I've got to talk about the game first because I seriously don't get some of the disdain this game has received, as I had a lot of fun here. I don't think it's perfect by any means, but the art style really grew on me. The combat at its core is simplistic and can get repetitive, but the card system and trying to find synergies with abilities really makes replaying levels feel fresh. The story is a lot of fun with some great laughs to be had, and overall, I just don't get the hatred here. Do I understand those who are disappointed? Of course. But a 3 out of 10? That shit is ridiculous, I'm sorry. I also want to say that yes, I would have loved another game in the same vein as the previous two, and hope someday we can still get a game in that space. However, I don't think South Park has to be restricted to a single genre, and if you're a fan of roguelites and the hack and slash genre, you might just have a great time here. 
All of this is to say, I really enjoyed my time with Snow Day as a game. The Platinum Journey though, not so much. The RNG related to this Platinum experience is just not a fun time, and even in such a short experience, I mean 11 hours isn't much work really, it feels a lot longer because of how much restarting is involved to get the pre-requirements in the first place. By the end of this experience, I was ready to be done with it because the trophies really brought down my mood. I think I summed it up pretty well at the end of the stream though. Oh my god, that was... I went into that... That was a roller coaster, man. I went into that game with such low expectations. Last night when we stream, I have a great time with the main story, and this stream, it's been just f***ing... Ugh. RNG garbage. Overall though, for the game, I, I do recommend the game. I don't recommend that. That trophy list is, is something else. Not 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 as fun. Some uh, There's some fun trophies in there, but, but overall, yeah, wouldn't recommend. Again, as a game, I had a lot of fun here, and with more content planned, I could see this being a lot of fun for hours and hours, because it's meant to be played over and over again. But for me, I'd had my fill when it was all said and done. I enjoyed the game a lot, and I'm excited to see what else the South Park IP has in store for us next. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to leave a comment with Princess Kenny to let me know that you made it to the end. Make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more games that you want to see get platinum next, as well as your personal favorite South Park game and Platinum Trophy. Thank you to all my channel members for that extra level of support, and special thanks to those in the Bear Club, Gene T. Puppy, Jackie White, Nugget, Dark Wolf, Daniel Fitzgerald, Scott Unwin, Steel Vanguard, NPO Crusader, Zafado, and Nef Nef. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, Go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mayor Hair Bear. Join the Discord server to have a chat. Go and chuck me a follow on Twitch if you want to see some of these Platinum Journeys live, or Mayor Hair Bear VODs for the entire unedited playthrough of this game, for example. And I'll catch you all in the next video.